everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Pokemon Crystal, where we are playing Ecrutic City. It's turn 14. Let's jump into things. This is actually a pretty big turn for us. Got a lot going on. We're going to just go piece by piece through everything. So we did some sight searching, found nothing. Our prophet's power has left this world, so we can have a new prophet. That's pretty good. Um, though we don't really have anyone at this exact moment that we're really wanting to prophetize. We've got a battle in Dumna, where Cyanwood City has moved forward. Okay, so we've got a bunch of ruby white belts, a battle girl X, some Hitmon Lees, etc. versus a small amount of province defense. You know how this is going to turn out. Now... We do actually kill one of the Hitmon Lees, and that is actually nice. Because the fewer he has of those, the less we have to worry about rear attack command. But that's all we kill. No big deal. We have a battle in Greenwoods where we attacked. Just raiding his province. Easy peasy. I say easy peasy. We've got uh, very little oomph as far as actual damage goes. Goodness gracious. We win though. We win. So we lose one ghastly for that, but we win. We have a battle in Arcatus where we are pinging the throne. Well, let's take a look at what's here. All right, we've got a bunch of Rattatas and Phantasmal Warriors, right? The Rattatas are nothing. The Phantasmal Warriors are actual problems for us. Even though they have very low hit points, they do do magic damage, and they are ethereal. So they're kind of an odd set against us. Um, it's very dangerous. To make matters worse, there's a bunch of Pidgeys and Farfetch'd, and we've seen how those do again. So this is actually kind of a tough throne for us. We could send... Probably like 150 ghosts here. Win and expect to lose about half of them. But we also lose... Ah! Our scout. Because of the Zubats. So the Zubats actually get us before we get off of the field. Unfortunately. So. Whoops. We lost one of our kimono women. Then we have a battle here in Larian Swamps. We guessed correctly. His god came to Larian Swamp. Om nom 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 nom. The shiny Snorlax is here with a black steel helmet and a never healing wound. All right. So we've got a about fifty. Where is this? No, this is closer to like eighty. This is very close to eighty, actually. I want to say uh, units. So let's see how this goes. All right, so Om Nom Nom casts Personal Regeneration. This means his regeneration goes from 5 to 15%, which is ouch. Um, also, he actually has very high protection. I thought that the Snorlax actually had low protection, but apparently it has base 20, um, which I think is probably a bit too much. When you, have, when you have a health sponge like this, right, especially something that has Corpse Eater, part of the balance is having low protection. You know, it's it's a high HP regenerator. Um, normally, those have low protection to start with, and then you buff them with gear, right? That's how you kind of compensate. But this has incredibly high hit points, regeneration, and high protection. So kind of overtuned, but let's see how it goes. Personal regeneration, gift of the hair, which probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Bark skin, which definitely doesn't matter. Did that, like, what, give us one point? Yeah, it gave him one point. Of defense, skeletal body, which I don't think matters against us at all. And he's put to sleep. So this is this is kind of one of those, the scenarios to watch out for, is, is he did get immediately put to sleep. So, while he is being put to sleep, the ghastly surround and start to smack around. But we'll notice something here. Right, his fatigue is not really going up. So 
And that is that is not to be expected as far as I'm aware, right? So the lick is armor piercing. This is why we're actually being able to kind of do some damage. But this paralyzing poison is not really going through. Um, he has poison resistance, 18. Uh, but that should not prevent the lick from actually doing damage. So it's halved versus size four. No, actually that, that might be what it is. So it's halved versus size four, one third versus size six. So one third means that what? Quick maths here. Uh, it's doing, actually it's doing right at around 18. So that is part of the reason why. It's because he's so large the paralyzing poison just doesn't doesn't really do much to him. So, that being said, that that concept is kind of off the table for killing him. Because so the the scenario there was obviously um, fatigue him out and then bur just burn him down with a bunch of attacks. Because um, if we watch here, right, we've got we've got a twelve, we've got a five, we've got a four, we've got a seven, we've got a one, we've got another five, right? We've got 11, 12, 2... Like, his HP tanks. Now, granted, he's not at his uh, threshold. His max threshold, since he's out of his uh, dominion, is 330. Um, so he's not regenerating yet. And he regenerates at 50 a pop. So As soon as he comes awake, we'll see the attacks begin to stop. Right? That's part of the issue. That's why we want him fatigued, is so he can't move around. Because every time he moves around, we're going to have to readjust. Um, and we'll get less attacks on him. And then, boom, he ticks, and his HP goes back up. At 3.30, it's actually very hard for us to kill him. But you'll notice something, right? There are way less Ghastlies around him than there were previously. That's because we are shooting the shit out of our own Ghastlies. <laughs> and we have been throughout this entire fucking game. And I'm just now getting to the point. So, like, we've been making minor adjustments here or there, right? I honestly, I, I think at this point I've come to the conclusion that we just can't use, um, with without putting up, um, like, wind guide and the, the air shield one. I can't remember what it is. Uh, but without doing something like that, I... I don't think we can do any... We can't use our ranged attacks. Not with, like, the, the massive amount of chaff that we're just losing to our own ranged attacks, right? So, if we... Let's let's think... We, we lose this, right? Because now, now we don't have enough people. We get routed. If we had everyone on... Hold an attack. Closest. Would we have one without you know range attacks? Maybe it's possible. I think it would have come down to how many haunters we had gotten into the situation. Being able to get hypnosis off, right? Obviously, this does this does work on him occasionally. We either the hypnosis or the sleep aura works because we got him. We slept him a number of times throughout this battle. So if we got to the point to where we had several hypnosis or sleep auras going off at any given time, I think the damage for some of these might have mattered. Um, we saw, right, in, in some of those instances where he was fully surrounded, he just, he just tanked um, damage-wise. Or, or just tanked, like, while taking damage. We did almost 100 damage. Uh, we did like 80 damage in a single turn the first time he got slept. So that's... There's definitely a possibility there that we could have... Uh, oh, we've got Curse of Stones on him now. Did he start with that? That happened. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, um, there's another thing that, that we haven't looked at. And that's the actual battle report, right? And this is why I think I think we might have been able to kill him if uh, if we had everyone on hold and attack. And that's because he didn't kill anybody. <laughs> he 
But that's not true, actually. He killed he killed the Spiro. Uh, well, actually, no. I think we, it, regardless, right? I don't know if it's uh, if it just doesn't show. Obviously, the math here doesn't add up. It doesn't show that we killed the amount that died. Um, that might be due to routing or what have you. But in, in theory, the shiny Snorlax didn't really kill anything. Now, he does have Swallow on Trample, right? Um, so this could account for the other amount of, uh, of enemies, or of Ghastlies that are dead that don't show up here. Because maybe trample, Swallowing on Trample doesn't count as a kill. I don't, I don't know. Um, regardless, though, I think there was a chance had I not killed 29 of my own people. Anyways, moving on, let's let's talk about other stuff. Uh, we had an event in Anvast. Spring floods have destroyed crops and buildings. We lost 229 gold. This is a horrible event for us. This is absolutely, this is a bad turn for us. But this is an absolutely horrible event because we need that gold. We need that gold a lot. And this is a lot of gold for us to lose. And part of the big point of us with the build that we have is fortune. To, to, get, to get a misfortune event like this hurts. It hurts really bad. Um, then we have uh, another event. Magical bird of wondrous colors has been found. Small gems were hidden in its feathers. Fire, air, and water gems. That's nice. Then they had the the arena. So let's watch these real quick. Okay. So this is a Karate King. Uh, comes with a whole lot of units, basically. And I, I, I would assume that's the plan. Is Cyanwood City is going to try to win off of the back of the mini units that he respawns. Against this Vermilion City Nurse, I'm assuming that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. And then we have another battle. My Handwood City just does all these battles, huh? Against a Safari Zone Warden. Or against a Tauros Rider named Safari Zone Warden. Okay. Oh, he's just... He's not doing anything. He's just holding. Now he starts going ham. That's pretty cool. But... Yeah. Ooh, ooh, hola, hola, hola. Well, we know we know this guy doesn't win because we've seen the, uh, the, the next battle, right? Okay, so this guy is... This is this guy is quickened. <laughs> oh god. And that that's it. He just runs up and three three attacks or six attacks. Do 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 do. That's pretty that's pretty cool. Nice. All right. And then the next battle, Mahogany. Now this is pretty cool. We've got a prophet with a sneezel. And a lure ball, so a dugong. But they are mute. Oof. Sneasel's cool, but I do not think Sneasel is going to win out against all of these units. Nope. That is definitely not, not the case. So victory to the Karate King. Uh, congratulations. They have received a champion's headband. I don't remember what a champion's headband does. So, five. Let's check real quick. A champion's headband does. All right. Time to uh, load. In. Champion's headband. Oh, oh, not generic. Champ. Headband. Not have. I mean, it's here. Weird. Does not show. Champion's headband. I wonder if it's. Named something else, the the scarf, scarf maybe. 
No. Got all the choice headband. We've got the oppressor's he headband, but that's a regular item. I don't see anything. Champion's headband. I do not see an item tagged in the mod with that that name. So I don't know what that does. Uh, I'll try to figure it out later. All right, what's it, what else we got? Patrolled some troops out, got some promotions. Easy peasy. Okay, what are we doing this turn? So we gained information there um, with the battle against the Snorlax. Um, and that information is, is that it's unlikely that we are going to be able to fatigue out and kill the Snorlax in the way that we thought we could. I think it is potentially still possible that we kill the Snorlax with like an 80 stack. Uh, if they're all on hold and attack, you know, or, or just attack, and they surround him and sleep him repeatedly while doing contis consistent damage to him. I think that is a possibility. Uh, I think that we're probably in trouble fighting him in his territory. If we're fighting him in our territory, there's a leg up, right? So, what is our plan? We got, we got a couple of little things in the work. So we're going to be attacking in Mountains of Madness, um, and we're going to be attacking in Kevin. Fortunately for us, after that battle in Larian Swamps, we did have a place to retreat. We had Greenwoods to retreat to. So a good portion of our forces are over here in Greenwoods. We're going to be putting those on Kimono 4 and moving into Kevin, um, and then we're going to move Kimono 5 back towards our lands. Okay? Um, he's got a big force here in Dunster. He's got this force here in Dumna that he just attacked us with, and he's got his god. My assumption is this. My assumption is, is he is going to use his god in his lands to continue to counter raid, right? Rather than press forward into my lands with his god. Maybe. That, that might be the plan. He might go ham and be like, yeah, my god's going to carry me and do it up. And that might very well be the case. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that he's gonna counter raid with his god, and then he's gonna send this big force towards me. Here's my guess. Based off of the movements that he's had in the past, my assumption is going to be that he's gonna want to combine these forces, and that he's gonna move this force to Histria, while he moves the force in Dunster to Dumna, and then his intention will be to take both of these forces and hit Gol Amrod. Okay. Um. That might not be what he does. We shall see. What we're going to do in response is we're going to sally out of Gol Amrod and Wesh into Histria in the hope that we find we meet him there and, and slaughter him, basically. Uh, so we've got a full 80 stack here moving into Histria, and then we've got a 50 stack from Wesh moving into Histria. Okay? If he doesn't do that if he just holds here in Dumna, or if he moves into Gol Amrod um, immediately, and then next turn reinforces with the force from Dunster from Dumna, uh, and or his god, then we're potentially going to have a very big battle. But we're we're prepping we're prepping prepping we're preparing for that uh, possibility as well. So if that's the case, we'll be able to just move our forces back into Gol Amrod. Because keep in mind, right. We still have really good mobility here, so there's no real worries there. Um, what else are we doing? So we do have a force here with Kimono 8. We are sending that force to Ekritik City, and we're sending Kimono 11 over to Wesh. Why are we doing that? Well, we're going to get free spawn here in Gol Amrod next turn, right? We're also going to get free spawn in Ekritik City. We have Kimono 9, right, is moving into Ekritik City with 25 units. Um, so we're going to be able to take those 25 units, add them to whatever is in Gol Amrod. I want to have someone be able to pick things up in Wesh and have someone be able to pick things up in Ekritik City. We're also sending Kimono 3 in 
to Ecrutique City to drop off these 21 units. So next turn we should have 40-ish units or more in Ecrutique City to be able to take to the front lines as well. So this is just that mobility of um, ferrying the free spawn back and forth, which fortunately we have set up fairly well at this point. In Anvast, we will have a fortified village next turn. Unfortunately, we do not have the income because of that event where we lost all that gold. We do not have the income to put up a temple this turn, so we're going to have to wait a turn on that. Um, instead, we are recruiting a junior trainer boy over here. We're still finishing the recruitment on our great medium over here, and we are recruiting nothing here because we need the money for next turn, basically. I say that. Do something cheap. Probably just do another kimono girl. Yeah, let's do another kimono girl. Because we should be fine. I think we should be fine. Four hundred. Yeah, we should be fine. Okay. Um, and then we've got some other things going on. Uh, and these are kind of important things. We are forging some gear this turn. Uh, we are forging a Horror Helm, and we are forging a Dusk Dagger. So the Horror Helm, um, this is specifically gear for my god in, in theory. The Horror Helm is uh, going to bump us up to Fear 11, which is pretty good. Um, and then the Dusk Dagger is the one of the quintessential uh, regeneration counters. Okay, so Dusk Dagger inflicts Bleed. And bleed does a percentage of your health in damage every turn. Um, the the Snorlax is strong, but it's not it's not so strong. We saw already, right, that if it gets surrounded, um, it can get just burned down. So it's definitely it's definitely not invincible. Right? If you add stuff in to counter either incredibly high damage sources, right? Um, so scenarios where you're doing like 30 plus damage on a hit, right? Which is something that our 26th strength god can do. Um, then that helps counter the regeneration, obviously. But then you add things in like Dusk Dagger and or things like Poison right um then it can really it can really kind of like amp up that situation does this guy have hold up let me double check he has five poison Let's the battle real quick he has 18 doesn't he yeah so that means he has he has a uh, poison resistance bless basically I guess that's so odd like if he has a base of five I guess does I don't remember does does nature just give you poison resistance I think it does yeah because it gives you poison resistance just like you know fire air and water give you those resistances so if he has if he had five to start with and he has seven that puts him at 12 right my math's not that bad is it but then how would he go up to seven how would he go up to 18 because like a plus five poison resist would just put him at 17 wouldn't it all right so something's fucky with the math here but, but what, whatever. Like, I, I'm obviously I'm missing something there. But uh, no big deal. So poison is not the greatest as a as a usage against him. So what we'll do is with the dusk dagger bleeding him, we'll be able to get rid of a good portion of his regeneration. Um, and we'll look at. I'm not super pressed for it right now. He's a little ways away. But what what we're going to be trying to do is build our god to counter him, potentially. And our god has a very good leg up in doing this. One, um, he 
we check again, he only has one magic attack, and that is this Lick. Now, the Lick does have Paralyzing Poison, right? But again, it's um, halved versus size 4 and one-third versus size 6. Okay, so we are size 6, so it's going to do less to us, and we have a built-in 9 poison resistance. Now, we could amplify this with a with something simple like a ring, a snake of ring, right? To make sure that we're immune to that. Um, so that's uh, a, an easy op opportunity, right? Um, but then even in, even in that situation, right? E even in the concept of him using that against us, part of the problem is, is he, his attack skill is 15. Okay, great, 15 attack skill. So his attack skill, 15 versus 12 defense except we're invisible right um so it's minus 10 unless they have spirit sight and i don't think he has spirit sight no he does not so he doesn't have spear well let's check because i keep on i keep on looking at the base and then seeing that he has other stuff no he does not have spirit sight okay oh also his attack he has a bunch of chevrons so his attack skill is 18 so so this actually is higher, um, but this is going to be minus 10, so it'll be 8 versus 12, so much harder time hitting me, um, and that's if we just leave things as is, right? That's that's not counting, um, you know, the ethereal on the two out of three attacks, etc., etc., right? So... I think we can set our god up to be a pretty decent match for the Snorlax. It's just a matter of, and this is how it happens in most scenarios, right? More often than not, it's never a vacuum. It's our god and an army versus his god and an army. So that's kind of the general game plan there is, is, is how do we deal with that? And part of that is I think our god can be kitted out very well against his entire setup right his white belts we take a look here in dumna um his white belts do not have high attack skill right very low uh they do not have spirit sight right they do not have magical attacks our god our god could could take on entire armies the only problem being uh, encumbrance right is our god fatiguing out so we have to be very careful about that okay so one more thing what else are we doing we are changing up our research so with cyanwood city's god being a little tougher than i had originally thought we are potentially going to have to worry about using battle magic in this early war so we're going to go ahead and finish up Conjuration 2 because we're just two points off of it. Easy peasy. So that does get us uh, shiny crystal haunters to utilize if we want to, um, as well as some other things for later, depending on what we do. And then we're going to run into enchantment. So enchantment uh, gets us a couple of different things during different states, right? It does get us personal regeneration for our own god, okay? Um, it actually gets us raised skeletons, which is going to be a better version of animate skeleton and animate de dead. Well, kind of, semi sorta. Um, for battle, it gets us eventually, as we get higher, it gets us raised dead, which is actually really good. Then it gets us soul slay, it gets us horde of skeletons, etc. Et These are, are all really good options that we would prefer to have in the near future. We are actually getting a little unlucky with our J-Boy recruitment, right? Our junior trainer boys come with two death, and then they come with a random chance for either one air or one astral. The airs are good. They're very useful for things. But really what we're wanting is we're wanting astral because we already have a handful of individuals that can be communion slaves but we don't have anyone that is prepped and ready to be communion masters necessarily. I mean, we do have some, our god and our veteran, but we'd like to have our junior boys be able to do that as well. So this was a little bit of an unfortunate turn for us, but I don't think it's 
I don't think it like puts us out of the game. Again, I'm not super, I'm not really afraid of his armies. I think any any of these armies that runs into an 80 stack of ghosts dies. We saw how badly his ruby white belts got destroyed by ghosts in the past. Um, really now for me, it's just his God. It's his God and how protracted does this battle become, right? Because if it, if it takes, I doubt anything's ever gonna take another 50 turns like Olivine City did, but if it takes 20 turns, Ah, that's gonna that's gonna be a while and the rest of the game we can see right azalea city is going ham they're huge mahogany right over here has taken the, this is their cap they have goldenrod city and they're basically all of this right um olivine is huge and basically taking all of this scenario um i'm pretty sure they're also taking vermilion city right now we're running into the situation where very rapidly this is turning into a very small game. So Vermilion City is AI already, okay? Um, Goldenrod City is basically dead, okay? So already it's a seven player game, right? One, two, three, five, six, seven. Yep, seven player game. Um. I haven't even seen Pewter City. I have no idea where they're at. So my assumption is is that that means they're small, right? So, and then we're fighting, right? Uh, the Ghost Boys and the Fighty Boys are fighting. And if we are fighting, that means that Azalea, Olivine, and Mahogany get to kind of do what they want. Oh, and Viridian, Viridian's here, but I don't think Viridian's very big. I've talked, I've talked to them. It, it sounds like they have had a slow start, and they're not really sure what to do from here. Anyways, uh, I'm kind of just, I'm just talking about random stuff at this point. It's turn 14. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, fingers crossed. See you next time. Bye, everybody.